The Special Investigating Unit and the National Health Laboratory Services have been granted an order to freeze 42 million rands worth of assets belonging to businessman Hamilton Ndrovo. This follows an investigation into corruption allegations linked to eight companies directly and indirectly linked to Ndlovu in dubious PPE contracts with 172 million rand. The SIU found that the well-known businessman used the funds to maintain his lavish lifestyle. He caused a stir on social media when he posted video footage boasting about buying a fleet of luxury vehicles with about 11 million rand. The order prohibits and restrains Ndlovu from selling any of his properties. Now for more on the latest developments on this case, I'm joined by the Special Investigating Unit's spokesperson, Ndate Kaiser Khanyakho. Ndate Khanyakho, a very good afternoon to you and good to have you on the daytime update once again. Uh, tell us why it was important for you to obtain this uh, preservation order and what exactly does a preservation order do? Thank you very much, Tammy, and thank you to your viewers. We were investigating as part of the PPE, which is uh, Proclamation R23 of 2020. And then we came across these uh, uh, transactions at the National Health Laboratory Services, where we found out there were irregularities. But because we wanted to go to the, to the Special Tribunal to go and set aside the contracts and, and recover, we knew that if we start doing that, people will move their funds and, 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 and they will disappear. And, and these properties. Therefore, we felt it was important to look into the accounts, and we found 10 million that was used from these accounts to a lawyer, in a lawyer's trust account, and we freeze that. And then the other four are four properties that belong to Mr. Hamilton Rovu to the value of about 32 million rent. We have freeze them, and that is what the preservation order is about. We want to keep them there. He, can, he cannot use them until we are done with the process of setting aside the contract and making sure that we recover the money. As far as the tracing of these funds in Dada Khanyaho, we have seen in previous instances where monies were put into the accounts of friends or family. Has this been the case here? In this particular instance, uh, what we have found is um, Mr. Hamilton Gofu created eight different companies and all of them it for, for the work at the National Health Laboratory Services, and the money went into those companies, and then ultimately it was traced back to him. About 87% of that of the 172 million was then given to him for his personal use. Only about 15 million of that amount was used to buy to buy PPEs. Therefore, at the moment, the traces that we are seeing is going to him. But if we, when in the when the, the investigation continue, find that it has gone to other people. Therefore, we will then follow the money up to at least about five layers down. We will make sure that we get everyone who might have benefited out of it. Looking at the current in inventory of assets that are available, once those are sold off in your effort to try and recoup the money, do you yet have an estimation about how much of the 172 million you will be able to get back? At the moment, we have not uh, made that quantification, but what usually happens at the end of the court case when my, we have got to money to be forfeited to the state, we then, uh, the court will then indicate what was given lawfully and what was not lawful, and then we will then get uh, that value for money exercise will be done, and we will get what we, we, we need to get. Obviously, like I said, uh, 42 million is what is there that we can hold. But we need more than that, obviously. Like we're saying, 87% of that amount was used for his personal use. Only 15, about 12% of it was, was used to buy the PPEs that were needed. Therefore, you can see that discrepancy. It already says to you that whatever he was delivering <coughs> is overpriced. But also, we have found that he is not even, if these companies have not even delivered what they were supposed to deliver in full. We talk now and we focus on Hamilton Lobo as the businessman. The allegation that you just made is that this particular contract was overpriced. What is the status regarding the investigation of those within the department who were involved in this transaction in the sense that it could not have been a one-man show? 
No, definitely. We, as part of the work that we're doing, we made referrals for disciplinary hearing uh, uh, to be conducted against officials of the, Department of, of the National Health Laboratory Services. Some of those officials then resigned and left the employ of the, of the NHLS. Therefore, when they have resigned, obviously, they cannot be disciplined, but then we will deal with them if they have benefited uh, along with, with the uh, American Global. We will deal with them with the civil case that we are doing at the Special Tribunal. The civil case and the criminal case, could you explain the difference there, Dr. Kanyaho? Yes. Well, what we do when we go to the Special Tribunal, we only deal with the civil case. And the civil case is, is uh, sort of um, dealing with uh, the, the probability, the balance of probability. And therefore, we, we show the balance of probability. Whereas, when the matter is then taken to the criminal side, they deal with, they have to prove beyond reasonable doubt. We deal with probability here, and then we make sure that we then recover the money. But the, when we find criminality in terms of flouting of, of, of laws and, and so on, the NPA know how to deal with it in the criminal sense. But they deal with it, they prove beyond reasonable doubt, we then do on the balance of probability in the special tribunal as a civil case. Are there elements in uh, Mr. Glovo's case now that are of a criminal nature beyond the civil that you will be pursuing? At the moment, uh, the, the, the team is, is uh, looking at all of that. And once we are clear that this was a deliberate move, because obviously if all these companies belong to one person and they did not declare that these companies belong to one person, and it, some criminality might arise out of it, and then that part will be sent. I'm not sure as to whether it has already been sent as yet, but it will be sent to the NPA. Dr. Kaiser Khanyaho, spokesperson for the Special Investigating Unit, thank you for that update regarding uh, the case involving businessman Hamilton Glovo.